Hello and welcome. My name is Nilaus and this is another tutorial of Advanced Autonomous Industries. This is the second one in the series. So if you have not read or read, <laughs> seen the first episode, I recommend that you take a look at this because we're going to be building on top of what we've uh, have demonstrated in the previous one. So in the very first one, we illustrated the point that we could have a hauler going to locations of miners. I'd actually like both of them. Yes, thank you. And then go to a location of depot if set depot is set to accept a lot of stuff right yes it will and then in this case i'll just transfer it to this location so that's what we learned last time it can all be summarized in two seconds of uh, of demonstration but i think it warrants actually getting uh, getting here now what you're seeing in the screen here with all these uh, new buildings that's what we're going to dive into this time because it's rather complicated but this is where the magic starts to happen this is a prerequisite for doing the automation that we'll be starting on in the next tutorial now the first thing to notice is that we have four different new types of radars and they do very different purposes for example this one is a tile scanner this scans the content of a tile for example i can take coordinates they come here x coordinate and y coordinate all of these tiles or all of these signals are part of advanced autonomous industries and why do i have that there we go um x and y coordinate let's just randomly take a different one but the content of this you can see the input is a coordinate set the output is what is the content x and y and whatever that's a land signal so that means it's just an empty land all right and that's uh boring what we can also do is use this one is a distance signal so basically let it say hey what's within 100 and then it'll iterate across all of them you can see what's there and just take some random ones and then hopefully there's something interesting in one of them no it's just land most of it even in my populated base it's still mostly land right tap right or it must be one of these squares that it has has scanned those are the x-coordinates it's the land signal and what's the content you can see down here it also scans a lot of different things here like power poles and there are also some red markers so that's uh that's pretty good so that's that will continuously scan within 100 uh, tile units in either direction and will continue so what this is used for is for example you can say if this is a fast transport belt then do something so you can put wire conditions on top of this i'm just gonna kill the content here the next one is a zone scanner well we learned in the last episode that we could make zones i'm just going to make a little zone here green uh, green crosses and that one will be one so if i go to the zone scanner and say hey where is and then we go into this new tab here that includes all of the zones that are available pretty cool that uh, there have been added so many zones so it really gives a lot of flexibility and i don't think anyone will reasonably run out maybe they will here so where is zone one and the id the number here is important this is the in order it's in the order they were placed the output will then be this one quantity of signal it's very important it seems re relevant at first it says how many green signals are there because that's important if i want to iterate through them so i say one two three four five i need to know how many i should count to before starting over or be done with it then we have the x and the y coordinates and we have some subtimes which to the best of my knowledge is basically just that times 10,000 but it has some additional uh, uh, accuracy but i have not i'm not familiar with how to use it yet we'll get to that so basically at this point you can say this one includes some x and y coordinates i could take this and put it into the tile scanner and then get an output of what's the content of this well we could also just uh, make it a bit more so I can make, I'll take this one and then mark a pink thing there. Should be set. And then I will, in this case, change this one to a pink cross. And then move it up here. So what's the content? The content is land and a fast transport belt. Great, right? Now the next one is a unit scanner. This scans the information of a unit. Well, that one, for example, let's uh, get the ID of it. This ID two of Mark two. 
So I will take, and this is where it gets really important. A lot of people will probably make this mistake. Do not use these signals because they're not actually signals. They are uh, references to, con to specific items. So if I use this one too, then I basically say the input signal is two of those, but that's not what I want. I want to go to the signals and then take ID number two. There, so the ID number two, I get a lot of information. I get how many of these are, the, are deployed. What is the ID number, the number of total deployment? What is the speed? Minus two. That's a bit strange. I think it just rounds down. What's the angle? Which direction is it turning? Turning straight up. What is the health? The subtiles, the X and the Y coordinates. How much power does it have? And how long time since the last signal, uh, last uh, command and last moved and then last command. So these are in terms of defining when it is idle. And let's, for example, let's actually move it. Yeah, this one, move it. And then let, let's look at the difference here. So now it says it's still a long time since it's, well, that's actually when it was deployed the first time. And then these are when it, last time it moved and last time the new command was sent. And it counts in, in, in game ticks. The inventory slot size, um, inventory, how much inventory is empty. Here we have the content, raw wood, and the sapphire. So this is actually running out of, of fuel, very much so. Um, why would I take that? So that's how that works. And you can see here, 2.6. So this can be used for programming, for example, when this is above a certain uh, content, then do something else. Or when it has, this is mainly for army units, when the health is low, when the power is low or when the ammunition is low, do something like call it back or when it's been idle for a certain time. So you could do the scanner and put some logic on top that actually makes some automatic controls on unit data scanner is at first it was a bit strange, but let's have a look at it uh, because it, it actually makes sense in order for what we're going to talk about as well. Here I will look at caller ID one. It's this one. So it doesn't matter what it has of content. Let's just make sure that it is this one. No, it's not. Damn. It's this one, right? This is number one. So I'll give it some random content. Let's go for the unit data. The unit data doesn't say anything about the content of it. It says what it's programmed for. In this case, the holder is programmed to pick up, and that's why it's a positive number, pick up 12,000 of each of the or these are the angels also, of course. If I took this and put it in here, I would get the content, how much content is there. So there's a difference on how to use it. And this part is actually a program. This is the part that makes it pick up because if I take, let's say, uh, okay, we're waiting for the auto save two. If I take the one we just moved, that one will say minus one, minus one means that it will export anything, but it will take some raw wood and some coal. So that it keeps powered. Meaning that if I have some coal on this one and send it up here, oh, to that one, for example, then hopefully the coal should get over. There we go. Coal goes over, that goes back. And they swapped uh, inventories. That's something that can be controlled or is controlled through the unit data. What will it take? What will it give? And this is where, again, the next building comes in. We did not introduce that last time, the deployer. It is an, has one inventory slot and it gives, um, it, it takes, you can put a vehicle in. Now, what it does is it has this little thing here. This is the vehicle deployed, deployed unit data. It is, for some reason, it's a bit off here, the layout, I don't know why, but it is. Here I can, for example, say, well, I only want this one to export, I don't know, 2000, 2000 that's all I wanted. So let's, um, let's take, for example, uh, where is it? Hauler ID six, corresponding to that one. Hauler six has all of these commands. If I pick it up, now it doesn't have any information. I'll put the hauler in here. It'll come out. And just need to check that it is actually hauler six. It's still hollow six. And then if we look at the information, it now is only producing or only accepting this, which means that at this point, 
If I take this one, mark it up here, and move it up here, it will not take the sapphire. I hope. While we wait for... Yeah, okay, and they're also kind of stuck here. Good. So let's move up and see if uh, if it picks up the sapphire. There's plenty of sapphire to pick up, but it won't pick it up. See? Okay, so that's the scanning part. That will only tell us what it is. Now, we also have some corresponding controllers that takes some input and applies it to a vehicle. These are the... There's no zone, zone or tile controller because you can't control the content of the tile. But there is a zone controller. So this one can apply a zone or it can remove a zone. So basically, if you give it an input... Uh, let's see... Let's see, let's see. If I if I do this. One goes here. I'll get a Y coordinate. If I mark this one, let's see, this is X742. I'll just try this. X742. And the Y signal is 347, 347, and then I mark this one as a different color, red, blue circle. Let's get this one in here. And it will then change it. It will also make this one saying, hey, you're looking at number one. Number one is now shifted one. That means actually in this case, it's that one. So that's how the zone controller works. The unit controller is working in the sense that what it does is it needs a unit input and then it needs a, it needs a coordinate. That's what it, it actually just gets. So what if I take this and put it in here? And then I'd say the ID, this one, number, oops, number six, because it actually now sent the other one. Oh, I also need to hook it up. Good thing. There, hook it up. Yes. Am I missing something here? Order ID 6 into that one. There's missing. Come on, you stupid thing. That's you, right? Why are you not doing it? It is outputting. Order ID 6. All right. I can't remember why it's not working. I think it should be. Oh, it, it's not hooked up yet. There. Oh, I thought it was working. See, that will go and park itself on top of that. Excellent. That's how it works. And the unit data, well, that's a bit more complicated, but that involves that I can take, again, the unit data in. And if I now mark this one with sapphire, uh, the sapphire, like 20,000 sapphire, great. And then again, we have to remember to hook it up. Yes, please. Thank you. That should set this one. I have no idea if it works, but let's give it a shot. Oh, see, now if I try to move it, it won't because it gets counter countermanded by this one. Turn it off. And that's something you have to be really careful about making conflicting commands. Also, if you send two X and Y coordinates, they will be, uh, there's a chance that they will be uh, added together if you have not controlled it. Look at that. Because I changed the unit data, it will now start picking up again. And that's how that works. So now we have all the ingredients. We know how the vehicles work. We know how the command works. We know how the scanners work. And we know how all of the controllers work. But now it's just a matter of piecing them together in new and unique ways in order to do some magic. And that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. So thank you very much for joining. And I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Cheers.